I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Cervetic, how many of the incidents in this unusual story. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Cervetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Nine years of solitary confinement. For nine years, crowds jostled me, waiters took my orders, conductors punched my transfers, operators got me telephone numbers. I was free and at large. But I was in prison. I walked in crowds, and I was alone. I had comrades, but I didn't have friends. And that's only part of what it meant to be a communist for the FBI. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabatic, Undercover Man. as Matt Sabetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Red Clay. For several days, I've been noticing a peculiar speculative look in Comrade Revchenko's official eye when he doesn't think I'm watching. He's sizing me up. When your chief in the Communist Party takes stock of you... You don't know if you're on your way up or on your way out. I don't have long to wait to find out. Revchenko wants to talk to me in private. And I put on my mad face, which helps me get away with some stuff that would land other comrades in front of the control commission for disciplining. Comrade Sovetic, you have lived in this town most of your life. That's right, Comrade Revchenko. You went to Uptown Senior High School? That's right. Then you know the principal there, Mr. Dexter Delancey? I never heard of Mr. Dexter Delancey. He may have been after your time. Dexter Delancey has a very ingenious and realistic approach to the problem of influencing American youth. He's certainly in a position for it. He sympathizes with our cause. But so far, he's been reluctant to join the party officially. Now, however, he has agreed to discuss the idea broadly. You are to meet him at his office at 4 o'clock for a general chat. chat. Once he joins the party, you will instruct him in your duties. You mean I'm to groom this highbrow to replace me? We need him. Youth is like play in hands like his. Well, I understand American kids pretty well myself. Orders, Comrade Sovetic. What happens to me? You will be sent to neglected strategic areas. Farmed out to the miners, you mean? Sent to strategic areas, Comrade Sovetic. I'm useful here, and I'm at home here. I see no reason. Comrade Sovetic. Four o'clock, Principal Delancey's office. Cultivate him carefully. I strolled down the somehow shrunken corridors of my old high school. Same old bulletin board, same old corny student cartoons on it, same graduation dance notice, the same decent, hopeful, eager kids. But to the architects of communism, clay. Red clay to be molded into totalitarian sameness. That would still mean two minutes to the final bell. I stopped in front of a familiar door. Room 10. Miss Hunter. Miss Hunter with the mass of bronze hair and the electric green eyes. Miss Hunter, my English teacher with whom I once imagined myself deathlessly in love. I reached for the doorknob. Down to the bottom of the I stand in the doorway, gaping. A big, mature-looking boy is reciting earnestly, but I hear him dimly. It is his teacher I gape at. Miss Hunter, younger and more beautiful than ever. 
The thick bronze hair, the green eyes, the faintly and pleasantly freckled nose. I just stand there in the open doorway, spellbound all over again. Very good, Charles. Fine feeling. Thank you, Miss Hunter. Uh, won't you come in, sir? For me? Oh, yes. And close the door. Oh. Are you the father of one of our students here? What? Oh, oh no. 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 <laughs> Don't be so emphatic about it. These are the most advanced seniors in school. Oh, yes, Miss Hunter. That's all, class. Those keen-looking seniors file past me, and I feel as sharp as a sack of potatoes non-select grade. The young man who had been reciting when I came in is talking to Miss Hunter. I feel a bond of sympathy with him. I know just how he feels. I was in love with my teacher once, too. He leaves, looking at me curiously, and then a beautiful teacher approaches me, straight out of the golden light of yesterday. It can't be. Hello. I'm Miss Hunter. Oh. oh. Well, now I've got it straight. Mrs. Hunter used to be my teacher. That's it. My mother. She's teaching in Buffalo now. Oh, you, you were a pupil of mother's. Now, Matthew Savetic, tell her. And not just a pupil. I was a devoted pupil. Oh, I, I think I understand. I'm having a somewhat similar problem with one of my students. Well, he, he'll get over it. Oh, I hope so. Unless he meets your daughter 18 years from now. I'm, I'm so sorry you can't see Mother. Oh, that's all right. I, I have an appointment with Mr. Delancey. Oh, what did you say your name was for my mother? <laughs> well, I have it written down someplace. Now, if you'll give me your telephone number, I'll call you and spell it for you. <laughs> okay? I walk out of that dim lilac haze with a telephone number stashed away in my head along with the memory of bronze hair and green eyes floating around in the lilac mist. I don't want to conduct red business in lilac time, but I've got to. The bubble bursts and soap gets in my eyes. And superior, horsey-toothed Principal Dexter Delancey gets under my skin with his theory for the reconditioning of young minds to the communist idea. And what is my method? Simply this, Mr. Kubelik. Sovetic. C-V-E-T-I-C. I am in a position to point out in my own history classes that our American forebears would have been communist sympathizers today. Oh, that's a good trick if you can do it. Oh, I can do it. After all, the Declaration of Independence was a document endorsed by the 13 states for the overthrow of government by force of arms. Yeah, but it was a tyrannical government. The government overthrown by the Russian Revolution was even more tyrannical. Mm, yeah. Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. That was Thomas Jefferson's personal motto. Nothing wrong with that. Wrong? It's marvelous. In his own words, the writer of the Declaration of Independence admits that revolution has the approval of heaven. Then how can the capitalist world accuse Russia of being godless? You see, etc. Go on, Mr. Delancey. Uh, call me Dexter. Now, look at the French Revolution. The more I listen, the sicker I get inside sick and scared. There's danger in this smirking egotist so vain about his learning. In this man lies infinite danger to America, this walking, talking decay so close to our youth. I listen to him so I can remember what he says, because I've got to find the answer someplace. When I finally get out into the clean air, I dial Chanute 3211 and invite myself over to call on Miss Mary Hunter. Even if I didn't have a plan, I'd want to see her anyhow. And look at her. Just sit and look at her. Mr. Severic, right on time. Come in. 
I walk in, stumbling stupidly on the throw rug, and walk into the living room and the presence of that other schoolboy admirer of Miss Hunter, the student named Charles. Mr. Matthew Savetic, Mr. Charles Weber. Hello, Matt. Hi. I've been helping Charles compose his valedictory speech for graduation. Oh, I didn't want to interrupt anything. Well, I'd rather talk. A seasoned debater, this Charles Weber. Oh, we'll find something to debate about, I'm sure. In less than an hour, by easy logical steps, I've managed to twist the conversation to politics, world affairs, the American Revolution. It's like an ice-cold plunge. I don't want to take it, but I've got to. I don't plunge in either. I stumble in. Involuntarily, it seems, I'm repeating the slick, sick, insidious mouthings of Principal Dexter Delancey and making Mary supply the answers I need. Well, isn't it true, Mary, that bourgeois minds consider the American Revolution radical? Isn't bourgeois a strange word coming from you, Matt? Well, I mean, conservative. Sure, it was considered radical by many. It was radical. It was nothing of the sort, Charles. It was overthrow of government by force. And if the Russian Revolution was radical, so was ours. Or putting it the other way, if our revolution was justifiable, so was the Russian. Our revolution was political. The Russian Revolution was social revolution by bloodshed and terror, class against class. Well, what's the difference? The Russian Revolution differed from ours in this great, great respect. It substituted one form of tyranny for another. Jefferson would be sickened by the turn of events in the Russian Revolution. I challenge that, Miss Hunter. Do you, Charles? I didn't realize you were so well informed on the subject. I've had several serious discussions on the subject with Principal Delancey, whom I respect and admire very much. Oh? In class and after class. And he maintains... Well, it's uh, it's getting pretty late. I I think I'd better be on my way. I've got the family jalopy. Let me drop you someplace. I'd like to speak to you for a moment, Matt. Privately. Oh. Well, uh, I'll take a taxi, Chuck. Oh. Well, thanks, anyhow. Good night, Charles. Good night, Miss Hunter. Matt. Good night, Chuck. Mr. Savetic. Oh, Matt. You haven't asked me why Mother has to teach in Buffalo when she's much rather be here with me. Well, it did occur to me to ask. She left here rather than be gagged by people like Dexter Delancey. Gagged? How? Delancey didn't force her out of here. He's a very powerful and persuasive man. Hmm. You mean you could lose your job here, talking up to me as you just did? If you reported it to the principal, as Charles did, it's just possible. Yes, Mr. Sebedek. I see. It's very late, Mr. Sebedek. I didn't mean to keep you. Uh Uh-huh. Well... Good night, Mary. Good night, Mr. Savetti. I spend a bad night thinking of Mary Hunter having to be cautious of a man like Dexter Delancey. I have a knot in my stomach thinking about young Chuck Weber, honor student, parroting the red line right out of the horsey mouth of Dexter Delancey. But that note of jealousy at the very end of the evening gives me the big idea. Turn Chuck against me because of Mary, and he might lump Delancey with me and turn against him, too. Maybe. I'd have to keep on supporting Delancey's views. I'd have to keep goading Mary into fighting me on them. Because if it comes to either Mary losing her job or my losing mine, she'll have to go. It's like that sometimes, being a communist for the FBI, and it hurts. It hurts bad. Starring as Matt Sebetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. All right, I'm a heel. But I have a job to do and I do it. 
I play remorseful and persuade Mary to see me again when I know Chuck Weber will be rehearsing his valedictory speech with her. Sure enough, I managed to drag in the line that our early American patriots would be called radicals today. I won't give the unpleasant details. They're too taut and angry and white-lipped, and I hate to talk about giving Mary Hunt a pain. But it works in this important respect. When Mary asks again to talk to me alone, Chuck Webber pounds out of there, but slamming that door. Oh, dear. He's pretty mad. He's very strange. He's very jealous. I'm sorry. It has no cause to be. Then I'm sorry. I asked you to stay to ask you a very direct question. Maybe I know what it is. I know you were seeing Principal Delancey the day you wandered into my classroom. I didn't just wander in. I made a point of it. I'm asking you. Are you a communist? Mary. Mary Hunter. Teacher. I'm not a communist. Oh, I'm so glad. Why? I don't know. I'd hate you of all people to be a red. Why? One of mother's people. One of her most devoted pupils. Mary? Yes, ma'am. Hold it. Wait. Chuck, have you been waiting for me in this alley all the time? If Mary's finished talking to you, I want to talk to you, guy. Mary? Yeah, Mary. And keep away from her, you sneaking red. Funny you should say that. All I know is what Dexter Delancey tells me, and you wouldn't call him a red, would you? Are you going to keep away from Mary? You're a powerful 180 pounds of star fullback, Chuck, and I haven't fullbacked in many a year, but the answer is no. All right, then. <laughs> oh. Don't make me hit you, son. You won't be able to. Cut, Cut it out. Fight, Tommy. Sir, fight! <clears throat> All right, you're not cut. Get out of there. Chuck, get out of here. Hit the grit if you want to graduate. Yeah. Run! Yeah. <laughs> And that's why I spend the rest of the night in the police station cell. I don't dare involve the FBI in bailing me out, and I'm plain scared of how Comrade Revchenko will take it. I'm reduced to calling Mary Hunter, the most beautiful teacher in the whole solar system. In the morning, there she is, and I feel awful about it. Thanks for coming down for me, Mary. I won't ask you what happened. And I won't tell you it's for a reason. It gives me a sort of an idea of what happened. Teachers are just too smart. Magic. Hold it. I will take custody of Mr. Sovetic. Comrade Revchenko gives Mary a withering look and then steers me outside and into a taxi. We don't say a word until we get to his office. He sits down, I stand. He looks at me with contempt. That's okay, though. I don't admire him either. In the future, Comrade Sovetic, save your street brawling for party purposes. Was it in the paper? And I came down just in time to relieve that woman of you. Who is she? A friend. She is not in the party. I would know her. She's not in the party. Then stay away from her. All right. These bourgeois women with their emotional demands. Keep away. I heard you. Remember. Or you will regret it. Don't worry. Go. But I want to see Mary once more. I just want to look at her. It's busy just before graduation, but she takes a few minutes at lunch to sit on a bus stop bench with me five blocks from the school. Neither one of us is very happy, though. After the other evening, when you denied being a communist, I thought things might work out, perhaps. I still say I'm not a communist, Mary. What about that dreadful man who came for you in jail? Well, you toadied to him as if he owned you. Why? 
Because he does own you, body and mind and soul, and you don't have to tell me why. Mary, please, don't cry. I'm not. You are, though. There was something just... just so sweet and sort of tender in the pupil of my mother. Falling in love with the daughter? Don't take it so hard, then, Mary. I'm not in love with you. It was a bit of nostalgia and sentimentality. You prefer it that way. That's how it is. Mm-hmm. The Bessie! Revchenko, I might have known it. Get in! Matt. You'd never understand. The Bessie! Sit down, Comrade Savetic. If it won't take long, I'll stand, Zachinko. Very well. You did not want to be sent to some hinterland when Dexter Delancey joins us. For a while, I considered your plea. Now, however, you will go where we send you and without complaint. That is all. I don't call Mary again. I've got to see her. I just want to sit and look at her. And the place would have to be the graduation hall of Uptown Senior High School. There's a lump in my throat and fog in my eyes as I watch the proudest kids in the world get their diplomas and become the gravest young men and women in the world. Then, Principal Dexter Delancey flashing his magnificent teeth makes a brief introduction. Our student of the year and four-year honor student athletically... Scholastically and in citizenship, Charles Weber. <laughs> Principal Nelancey, members of the faculty of Uptown Senior High School, fellow students and friends. With the generous assistance of Miss Mary Hunter of the English department of this high school, I have prepared a valedictory, but I have decided not to give it. Instead, I should like to debate this question. Is the revolutionary philosophy of our founding fathers radical? I shall ask our distinguished principal and revered teacher to take the affirmative in that debate. Mr. Delancey? Oh, brother. Mr. Delancey? No, most certainly not. This is most irregular, Charles. Give your prepared speech. Since Mr. Delancey is not prepared to debate this question publicly, I myself shall take both sides of the question and answer the un-American and subversive charges that have been made against our greatest patriot. It's great. Point after point, slander after slander against our founding fathers. Chuck Webber breaks down, coldly, methodically, magnificently. Dexter Delancey gets up in the middle of it and stalks out. And when it's all over and Chuck Webber sits down, they all stand up and cheer. I stand up in my chair. I want to look at Mary Hunter. I see her, and she's beautiful. Cry. I just stand and look at her. I just want to look at her. That's all. Good morning, Revchenko. Mr. Vesetic? Savetic. Good morning, Mr. Delancey. Comrade Delancey, soon, I trust. In fact, I am prepared to undertake a full tour of duty at once. Splendid. You mean you're prepared to give the party your full and undivided time? Precisely. What about your duties at school and on the board? Well, you'll be pleased to hear that I tendered my resignation this morning. As a consequence of last night's embarrassing events? Well, uh... Under the circumstances, Revchenko, I, I couldn't face a board action. You resigned. Forthwith. Fool. What? He said, fool. I don't understand. Get out. I don't understand. Explain it to him, Comrade Savetic. You're my functionary in this district function. I have work to do. I don't understand. It's this way, Dexter. As principal, Dexter Delancey, of a metropolitan high school... 
and a member of the board, you'd have been invaluably situated for the service of the party. But I... You could have worked behind the scenes. Instead, you became plain Mr. Dexter Delancey, of no use to the Communist Party. Incredible. I'm ruined. Sorry, Dexter. Dexter stumbles out in a daze. Then, I walk out on air. He goes his way, I go mine. Delancey is out, and I stay in. As undercover man working hand in glove with the FBI. The work goes on. I win. But when I win, I lose too, always. No more homework, no more books, no more teacher's saucy books. No more any kind of looks than my teacher. To Mary Hunter, I'm a red. It's always that way. I'm a communist for the FBI. I walk alone. Dana Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews with the word about the story you've just heard. This play, although based on fact, is happily a rare entry. Rare because the teaching profession has always been outstanding in preserving our American ideals. In this story, as in all others, names, dates, and places are fictitious to protect innocent persons. Many of these stories are based on incidents in the life of Matt Savetic, who worked undercover for the FBI. Next week, another fantastic adventure. Join us, won't you? (laughs) 